Charity, whatever happened last night, it was against me will and it should never have happened. Well, you're not about against you will, you practically begged me. You, you seduced me more like! What have I done with about Trisha? Look, just do what I do, forget it happened, we were drunk. You're not supposed to excuse it! We slept together! And? I, well, well, does that mean something? Well, I'm sure it wasn't deep and meaningful for you and it certainly wasn't for me. <laughs> Sex happens, Marlon, just forget about it. And anyway, I've got to get myself down to the station and sign in. I'll never forgive myself. What if Trisha finds out? Well, I'm not going to say out, am I? And do you really think I care what went where last night, the trouble I'm in? I could be about to face a life sentence, Marlon. I don't care! <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, love. Oh, no. Well, what shall I say to him? Tell him I've gone out. Tell him I didn't know him. Come so early. Morning. All right, what can I do for you? Rodney, not about. No, he's had to go out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple of massive house clearances. So he's all right for money, then, is he? He's out buying stock. Well, he's gone with a mate. He's more of an advisor than anything else. I think he might be out till this evening. Tell him I'll go around later, then. Oh, then again, his mate might take him for a drink and a bite to eat. You know. Thank you for all help he's been. Most people I'm looking for have mates that are keeping them busy elsewhere. I'll leave you to pass on the message. Whenever you do finally reunite. All right, then. See you. I don't know what we're doing in here when there's a perfectly good pub across street. Who are you around here? Oh, so it were. Oh, that's right, I've remembered. Don't go supping in Woolpike for rest of the afternoon. Inferior air lingers on pallet. What are you on about? I've got a new homebrew wants to test drive it. Meet me at Shed at four, and we'll have a few beers and play some cards. Oh, it sounds good to me. No contributions necessary, I take it. It's on the house. I'm in there. Oh, I thought you might say that. Oh, and a nice young Danny. No lasses, oh, mind. Man, it's strong stuff. <laughs> But you're going to have to do summer. I know. He's not going to go without a fight, is he? No, he'll be back tomorrow. I'm finished. I'm not thinking of doing a runner for airport, are you? Well, it might come to that. What am I going to tell Nicola? She thinks everything's going beautifully. Well, there's no point lying to her, because she'll find out anyway. I don't suppose cleaning business could help pay McGee. Hardly. Here, I'm going to go and see Pollard. See if I can get my bride back. So the wanderer returns. Hello. Had a nice night out, did you? Well, I just, I, uh, I fell asleep on Paddy's sofa. I see. It's true. You're gonna let me know you weren't coming home. I had your tea cooked and everything. A phone call wouldn't have gone amiss. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really sorry, Lisa. There's no excuse. You're very lucky to be staying here. Don't start treating this place like an hotel. No, 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 no. It won't happen again. I bet you wouldn't have got up to this sort of thing if Trisha were here. Sorry? Stopping out all night without letting her know. Oh! Oh, no, I'd always go home to her. Yes. I best get to work. See you later! Yeah. Most likely you will. I paid you five grand to get me planning permission and you haven't got it, so I want my money back. I've already explained. That is not a possibility. But you haven't done anything. Well, I've done my best, and permission was denied. It's not as if I haven't made you a substantial offer for the property myself. Substantial? You offered me 200 grand less than I paid for it. Ah, and, and actually, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about that. It was handy you were popping by. <laughs> um, I've taken advice, and because there are restrictions on the property, I'm forced to reduce my offer to 600,000. What? Mm. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Marlon, oh. don't tell me you're going to try and avoid me all day. No, it's a matter of fact. So, do you know what he got up to last night? Who? Marlon? 
Yeah? You didn't come home, did you? <laughs> My grown mother can stop out the night, one, can't I? Oh, well, I don't mind what you get up to. No, it's just nice to see you live life a bit, you know, while the wife's away. I kept on a maid's sofa! I never said you did it. Pine cheers for two when you're ready. Oh, he's a dark horse on quiet, isn't he? You see? You see what's happening? No, she's just trying to wind you up, Marla. You just... you don't get it, do you? I'm sorry, Church, but after last night, I don't think I want any more to do with you. Come on, Eric, be reasonable. 600,000 is my final offer. Why are you doing this to me? It's nothing personal, it's business. Sorry to interrupt. Do I take it the deal's been shook on? No, not yet. Oh. I might have known you'd be involved in this somehow. Oh, I'm sure I don't know what that's supposed to mean. So, do we have a deal? It's worth at least 900,000, even without the planning permission. Maybe, but I'm looking for a bargain. I do believe it's a buyer's market at the moment. Are you too determined to see me ruined? I'd just like to remind you that it was you who came to me. I didn't force you to buy the place. 850,000. 750. Over my dead body. Now, just give me back my 5,000 pounds. That money was for services rendered. Now, if you are not interested in my offer, I am impossibly busy. I'll get you for this. He'll be back. Hmm. I rather think he will. <laughs> to be stuck in Jarvis's pokey shed all afternoon. Well, my sis decided he's not going. Oh, he has been suffering lately. How do you mean? Well, it's his rheumatism in his hip. He's oh. been in agony, and according to him, it means we're in for a bad winter. After the scorching hot summer we've just had? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I told him, but you know what it's like. But he has been in a lot more pain than usual. He's even talking about going somewhere warm, you know, over to Australia to stay with Cathy. He'd swelter out there. Oh, why, and he'd be treated right royally and all, waited on hand and foot by the poolside. <laughs> oh, I'll say this for him. He might be suffering, bless him, but he has a fine old way of working things to his own advantage, as my say. Mm. There you go. You getting there? Yeah, ain't she just? Well, it's all the rocket science, is it? She wants a rocket put in under her. How long did it take her to dribble out my port? I was doing that to annoy you. Didn't I say, Edna? It's Mrs Birch to you. <laughs> What's going on then, Ellie? Why the long face? Well, I got a call from Manchester Uni today and a place has come up on the course I applied for. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. See, I told you... Oh, sorry, I told you things would work out for you one way or the other. Well, yeah, but the course starts in a few days. It means I'm going to have to leave everyone. Yeah, but that's what happens when you go to university, and it's what you've been working towards, isn't it? What about my granddad? Your granddad? It, it would be absolutely chuffed to bits. You're not thinking that you can't manage without you, are you? Just, you only moved round here for my benefit, you know. I think he's got a fair few friends, though, you know, Ollie. And then there's Danny. What am I going to say to him? Has my dad been in? Don't think so, no. He's disappeared off the face of the earth. Why, what's happened? Oh, you'll be painting the town red with some floozy. Oh, don't get jealous, Edna. I'll get round to asking you soon. <laughs> Ladies. Oh, now, where have you been hiding yourself? Oh, you know how it is, friends, to see in half the pubs in Hotton. How are your piles clearing up, Edna? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cousin of mine that suffers. My Frank Bernard has a marvellous ointment. Works a treat. For the last time, I am not in need of any ointment. Oh, well, you know where to come if your friend gets them back. Where are the gentlemen? Round at Jarvis's. Oh, um... Oh, do you know, I've left my purse at home. Oh, that's all right, Pearl. I'll buy you a drink just this once. Uh, uh, no. Thank you. It's very kind of you, Betty, but I don't like to take advantage. That were a quick in and out. Yes, and we should be thankful for it. Oh, there you are. I've been bringing you and everything. I had to get away. Do some thinking. Dan, what's the matter? I thought things were going really well. 
They were. Has something happened? <sighs> I can't get planning permission on the mill. You're joking. I gave Pollard a huge backhander and he's reneged on the deal. I don't believe this. Look, I told you not to get involved with him. What did you expect? All right, all right. Well, you, you brought this on yourself. And if that's not bad enough, he's got Steph in cahoots with him. How do you mean? Well, she's persuaded him to put in an offer to buy the mill off me. Well, that's good, isn't it? For £600,000. What? Oh, and on her say-so? Well, I hope you told them where they could stick it. Of course I have, but that doesn't solve my immediate problem, does it? What the hell am I going to do with a mill I can't afford? <sighs> she's got a flaming nerve. Well, look, don't panic. You'll sell it on soon enough. You just have to make repayments in the short term. And there's some more bad news. I went to a loan shark for the deposit money. Oh. And I've just missed the first payment. So, what's verdict then? Oh, strong stuff, all right. <laughs> Best you brood yet? I told you. It's going to be for our holiday kit morning, this stuff. Me Rodney's in it a minute. Last thing I need is a sore head. Oh, will you stop moaning, lad? Have you never heard of Hair of the Dog? <sighs> God, if that's Edna come to complain about noise. Oh, it is a den of liberty. Edna was right. Is it a men only membership? No, come and join us if you like. Oh. If you insist. Oh. Yep, we're just christening a new brew. <laughs> How adventurous. <laughs> Do you want half? Oh, no, Tar. But I wouldn't say no to two in the same glass. <laughs> oh, go on, lay into me like everyone else has. Can't be an easy time. How are you? Well, what, how do you think? If you're not all accusing me of murdering Chris, you're laying into me for snitching on Kane. Do you really think he killed Chris? Well, it wasn't me, Emily. I know I'm a terrible mum, but I didn't... I didn't kill Chris. You're not a terrible mum. We know that's not true, both of us. I should never have taken Debbie away from you. I'm sorry. It was because you loved her. I know how happy she was to have finally found you. Um, this happening don't mean you never cared for her. But she could be anywhere. I mean, what is Kane playing at? If he's not guilty, why is he still running? Because he's scared, I suppose. Look, I don't want to say that everything's going to be all right, because I don't know that it will be. But I really hope things get easier for your charity. I really do. <laughs> oh, stop going on, Nicola! No, what were you thinking of, going to a loan shop? I had no choice. I needed the 10% for the deposit. And this McGee came looking for his money earlier? That's why I'm keeping a low profile. He... Said he might come back tonight. What? He's coming round here? Dad! Oh, I know. That's why I've got the lights off. I was hoping he might think I was out. He's a loan shark. He'd be used to people trying to dodge him. He could break in and get violent. I know that. What else can I do? I haven't got any money to give him. <laughs> well, you look pleased with yourself. I've had a very productive day, thank you, Betty. Oh, well, that'll make a nice change, won't it? Seeing as how you're last to clock in on a regular basis. Thanks, Could Jeff. I have a quiet word, please, Stephanie? Yes, of course you can. I bumped into Rodney earlier on. He's far from happy. He says that you've been helping Eric to swindle him out of a great deal of money. Oh, I wouldn't call it a swindle. More a sound business move. I do work for Eric. I do hope you're not going to start getting involved in shady deals again. Dad, I don't know what rubbish Rodney's feeding you, but take it from me. He is trying to offload a property for a lot more than it's worth. I'm making sure my boss knows its true value. That's all. Oh, well. You're not doubting my motives, are you? No, of course not. I'm just checking the facts. Well, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, yes. 
knowing again. Well, I haven't any cards left, and I can assure you I haven't slipped any down the cleavage. Well, that's three in a row you've won now. Yeah. Well, I am rather a cardaholic. I've been thrashing my Frank Bernard on a nightly basis for the past 20 years. I beg your pardon. <laughs> At cards. Right. Am I dealing again? Aye, oh, well, get on with it. This time I'm raising stakes. Feeling fortunate, are you? Right, get me another drink, and who knows? I might let you win this time. <laughs> you could have my retreat, you know, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. You don't mind a baby gate crashing your party, do you? Do we have a choice? No, 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 you, no, you carry on. Aye, <laughs> right, get shuffling. Righty ho. I doubt he's going to come now. Well, even if he doesn't, he'll turn up at the shop tomorrow. You can guarantee that. Maybe it's not him. I know you're in there, Rodney. I shouldn't bother if I was you, it's useless. Mind you, you'll be too by the look of you. Looks like you found your perfect match. Well, forget about her, come on. No. Well, what are you doing? I'm getting out before Horseface does an evil Knievel on us. Well, she's gone now. Yeah, and we've got about as much privacy here as we've got indoors. Let's just go home. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, right. Yeah, Tash. I've got a big decision to make. <laughs> <laughs> right then. I'll get the first round. The first round? And how many have you had in Jarvis's shed? Mm. Well, only a couple. <laughs> you K-Line. Oh, what are you starting? Uh, we've had a superb game of cards, haven't we, gentlemen? Truly superb. Never play cards against Pearl. We're just under chance. <laughs> you were supposed to be going home to get your purse. Uh, well, I know, but I suddenly thought, why not knock at the shed? If we could play in pairs next time, what do you say, Leonard? <laughs> uh, we, uh, well, we could do. I understood <laughs> that it was men only. Well, it was, but you didn't mind me joining you for a bit, did you, gentlemen? Mm. Those who force themselves on others are seldom thanked for it. Does that go for uninvited opinions too, Edna? <laughs> 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 Are you in a room? <laughs> Sit down before you fall down. No, no, of course oh. not. <laughs> you like her, though, don't you? <laughs> well, I haven't given it any thought now. Just drop it, will you? Ooh! 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 Grand Latino! <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Come on, Rodney. I know you're in there. Come on, Rodney. You can't hide away forever. I know where you live, so I'll get you in the end. See you tomorrow. Good night, Nicola. He knows my name. I'm sorry about this. Dad, he knows who I am. He could hurt me. He won't, he won't. I won't let him. Well, you can't stop him if he can't afford to keep up the payments. We can't go on like this. Done for a good murder, Pollard. Yeah, and Steph. How could you let them get away with doing this to you? I didn't have any choice. Oh, it makes me sick. His wife's an MP, and he's getting up to all sorts with some gold digger and taking bribes. Yeah. I bet Steph thinks all their Christmases have come at once seeing you suffer like this. Nicola? <laughs> You're a genius. Leonard! Over here. Well, I'm just having a catch-up with my granddaughter. Uh, oh, all right. I just have to make do with you, then, Gervais. What's up? Well, I got a place at Manchester University. A vacancy came up on the course. Yes! See, I told you things would work out somehow. Well, that's, that's fantastic, look, fantastic. Look, I'll get a drink in. I really am chuffed for you. I really am. I can't believe it. Yeah, but it's perfect timing for me and all. Why? Well, it looks like Rodney's going under, so there's nothing to keep me round here, is there? How do you mean? Well, if I ain't got a job round here, then I can come with you to Manchester. Yeah, I've always fancied it. 
What are you doing here? What will people think if they find you here oh, with me? Oh, for God's sake, will you just calm down? OK, so we slept together. Don't say it out loud! Marlon, please! It is over and done with. Can we just move on now? Jersey, the thing is, I'm really happily married, and last night was a <sighs> terrible mistake. Can you just leave me alone together and we work, please? You can't cut me off just because of last night. No, you expect me to be Marlon, alone. I need you! Shh! You are the only mate I have got right now. And I'm frightened. I could be about to get locked up for good. I know, I'm sorry. OK, it was just one night that we spent together. So just forget about it like I have and start thinking of ways to help me prove to the police that I am actually innocent. Yeah, OK. Right. I don't understand what I said. Well, Steph and Polartic, they're so smart seeing me on the road to bankruptcy. But you have to ask yourself a question. Why is she so keen to help him, huh? What does that suggest? And as you said, huh, he's our local MP's husband. Gloria's not going to like to hear that he's been taking bribes. And when she finds out that he's also been working very closely with another woman... You're going to tell Gloria they're having an affair? Well, not exactly. Got it. But I think it's only right... 207... ..that uh, she knows about my suspicions. Huh? After all, it's my duty as a loyal constituent to help her nip it in the bud. Ah, Gloria, Rodney Blackstock. Mm -hmm.